Good evening, YouTube. How are you all? Yes, I'm in my pajamas again, and my hair's a little bit, but clear. I'll leave my hair alone. I promise. Today is Thursday, the twenty second of November, two thousand and eighteen. It's really early, actually. I think it's about six o'clock in the evening. My name's Jan Silver. For those of you who've only just joined my channel, and I've been video logging my journey to and beyond the gastric bypass, which I had. 20 months ago, just over 20 months ago, um, I've lost seven stone-ish, not quite seven stone, but I'm nearly there, but I'm not aiming to get there, but that's another story. Um, yeah, I was kind of, I didn't feel like I um, finished what I was going to say last night, and I've watched a few other YouTubers that I follow today. I promise I won't play my hair all night, Claire. Ah, you know when you're just looking at yourself? I'm really hormonal, and obviously this is, this is, uh, a really clear character trait of being hormonal because I don't like what I'm seeing. I'm kind of like, eh. and even though last night I just got out of the bath and my hair was scraped up and I had no makeup on, I was like better with myself than I am right now. But hey, perhaps if I don't look at the screen and I just talk to you guys and say what I need to say, not need to say, I just didn't feel like last night I came across, um, I didn't feel I came across saying everything I wanted to say, I think. I kind of wanted to talk about and then I get swept away. I start something and that's my whole life. I think I start a conversation and then it feeds into something else and something else and something else. And in fact, then I've gone off the point that I wanted to talk about in the first place. So yeah, I wanted to talk about how I came to the conclusion or that or the, the decision that I wanted to have weight loss surgery. And um, because I've never really talked about that in depth. I've never really discussed on here with you guys, you know, <clears throat> what was going through my mind for many, many years. And, you know, the whole yo-yo dieting when you get, when you lose some weight, and you're, yeah, I did it. I can stop my diet now. And then it's so fucking depressing because you then go, well, I'm not on a diet, so I can have this, I can have that. And I'm not lying when I say I didn't have a sweet tooth. I've probably got more of a sweet tooth now since my gastric bypass, which is quite ironic than I had before. But yeah, you're you're in so much denial about your weight, I think, when you're at your biggest or you're gaining that weight, that you refuse to look. You refuse to look at yourself. You refuse to weigh yourself. Um, if anybody else mentions it, God fucking help them. You, you know, it's kind of like, if I'm not admitting that I'm fat and big, don't you fucking say it because I would kick off. My kids, for instance, would never use the word fat. The word fat, I think, came out my stepson's mouth once and I still haven't forgiven him for it. You know, it's that kind of, yeah, we, we don't use that word in this house because I know what using that word would have done to me because I was fat, but in denial. So even though my friends would say I was the first one to take the piss out of myself about being bigger. Um, but God, my confidence was knocked in the end. I think moving away, we moved away. Harry and I got married, he moved to India and then I decided to go with him. And I think it probably wasn't till we got to Singapore and I realized I was, I don't even, you see again, because I didn't weigh myself and I was in denial, I didn't really know how much I weighed. I was a big girl, but going to the gym. So even though I would go to the gym probably four to five days a week, I was running on a treadmill, I'd be doing cycling. When I gave up smoking, I was climbing 40 flights of stairs, believe me. I never got under 100 kg, so that's what I do know. I don't know how high I was at my highest at that point, but I do know I just couldn't budge my weight down at all under 100 kg, um, which is, I, I, I don't know what the math is with that, but um, but it was really disheartening. And I, I knew the score. I knew that I could do all this exercise and use all, burn all of these calories, but then I'm going to go and eat like shit. I'm going to drink the alcohol, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it really wasn't being conscious, not wanting to be conscious about what goes in your mouth, about what goes in your mouth is going to affect the, your whole body and not here and now, it's going to be further down the, down the track. Um, 
but I did know I wasn't happy. I did know I was an embarrassed gym goer. I was a big girl running on the treadmill that all of these skinny, tiny, weeny Singaporeans were probably laughing at. I never saw them laughing at me, but I'm pretty sure they were like, oh, here she comes. Oh, sweaty Betty. You, you know, that's what you're thinking, isn't it? And um, yeah, so I tried really, really hard because I was an expat wife who basically had nothing to do. That sounds absolutely shit, guys, but it's true. You have staff, you have, uh, you know, in India, we had a maid and a driver. And in Singapore, we still had an IE, which is a maid to do all your housework and cooking if you want. Um, and what more is there to do than work on yourself? So I did go to the gym and I did try really hard, but I also parted really hard. So yeah, and I think when that happened, I thought that I'd exhausted everything. I'd tried the diets. You know, I could detox Monday to Friday, then I have a drink and it all slides. And, and it was a just, it, it was kind of a snowball effect because then eventually I think when I came home, my daughter was getting married and I really wanted to look good and feel good about that. And when I look back at pictures, well, no, 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 not when I look back at pictures. At my daughter's wedding, I was really ashamed of myself. I bought what what was a really nice outfit, but I was still a size 18 and fat, carrying a lot of fat around. And um, I had this very low cut top that showed off my cleavage. Now, 10 years previously, I would have been all out there for showing off a bit of cleavage. But actually, I remember saying to the photographer in the morning when my daughter was having her, uh, her hair done, her makeup done, do me a favour and don't get my boobs in it. I'm really ashamed because my boobs would just look like fat pushed up into my neck. And I was really, I was cringing. And I still cringe. I, I love the photographs because it shows what a wonderful day we had, but not of me. When I see a photograph of me and my daughter or me and my husband on my daughter's wedding day, it definitely is one of those poignant moments where you just go, oh, why couldn't I have had the surgery before that? Why, you know? But I, there's no regrets, like I said yesterday, because that was my only regret, actually. I should have had it a long time ago. I should have done this surgery a long, long, long time ago. That I suffered miserably and was unable to take control of my eating habits or my, well, whatever habits they were that caused me to be obese and overweight and unhealthy. I couldn't do it on my own. So weight loss surgery was the way to go for me. And we discussed it, Harry and I, we discussed it while we lived in Asia for a fair few years. I say discussed it, I'd throw it out there and say, I think I want a gastric band, you know. Is that okay? Is that okay? And he'd be like, Jan, I love you as you are. He's always been, we talked about it this morning actually, always been the most supportive person throughout. I think when you love someone, it doesn't matter whether they're fat, fat, thin, black, white, yellow, pink, red, do you know what I mean? It truly is. There is, you know, beauty is within the eye of the beholder. Is that the right thing? I think, you know, and I, I the question with Howard this morning was, you know, we were talking about our weights. When I got together with him nearly 20 years ago, he was probably the skinniest he's ever been because he was sick. He wasn't that long diagnosed with um, uh, diabetes, type 1 diabetes. And I remember saying to him, but I loved you then. And he goes, yes, Jan, because weight was never an issue within our relationship. And I was like, no, you're right, because then I got fat, you know, and we still loved each other. So to have that support from your partner is really, really important. But not only the support, Harry and I did the research together. He probably did more than me about everything. And he said, did you know a lot of relationships fail? when um, one person has this uh, surgery because they're gonna change dramatically. And I said, no, I didn't. But we looked into it and we were laughing going, is our relationship strong enough? Fuck yeah, we've been through more than this, than, than one of us losing weight. You know, we've been through an awful lot more and moved countries more than, more than anybody cares to remember and, you know, up to our whole life and family. So of course, weight loss, me losing weight and feeling good about myself is not ever gonna be a problem within our relationship. So I think if you talk about that, and you have that and you know, he knows how much I wanted it and I know he was there to support me and back me, then that was a good thing because it will, it still isn't 20 months down the line, never has he said anything against my weight loss. He's been the most supportive, uplifting person ever. Um, and even today I put a skirt on for the first time, probably since last winter, skirt tights in the top. And he's like, you look really nice in the skirt. And I was like, wow, as much as he loved me back then, I never got compliments like that, you know, and I still go, oh, thanks, honey. That's really cute of you to say so. So yeah, um, 
And then we did. I looked in. I thought the gastric band was the way to go. I hadn't done my research at that point. And Harry and I went to have a um, a consultation with a, a doctor just off of Harley Street and in London. And yeah, he put us off it initially and said that that wasn't the way to go these days. Sorry for anyone who's had a band and is successful, but this is just what I was told. And then eventually we ended up at the Berkshire Independent, where we were also told of all the facts um, surrounding the gastric band, the um, vertical sleeve gastrectomy, and then the uh, gastric bypass RMY. And personally, I wanted a no fail. I didn't want to have a VSG that I could then maybe screw up and have to turn it into a gastric bypass because I think that's the way some people can go. If they fail with their VSG and you end up regaining, you can end up with um, having to have that in the end. So I thought I'll go straight to the end point. Let's go where it's not a no fail. People still fail this gastric bypass, but I hope I'm not going to be one of them. I hope that throughout all the times in my life where I've quit things and I haven't I haven't followed through or seen it through to the end, this isn't going to be one of them because I'm so happy where I am. And as much as I'm not a bariatric angel with what I eat, what I do, da 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 da, da um, life is crazy busy at the moment, I'm still watching my weight even, and I wouldn't have done, you know, I kind of laughed this morning. I'd been away with Claire for a couple of days to the cabin and I ate crisps and I ate, you know, I had a hot chocolate. I don't even normally have a hot chocolate, but she'd said it and I went, mm, I'll have one. It was like, mm, OK, let's have one. And both of us, excuse me, actually felt quite ill afterwards. You know, I think that may go with time where you realise something's going to make you feel pretty shit and you won't do it. Um, clearly not 20 months out, but I kind of overindulged a little bit. So I got on the scales happy to report it's only a couple of pounds and I know that couple of pounds I can lose again you know so for me it's all about watching my way and monitoring it I'm not on a diet and I'm not stopping what I can eat I know I've got a restriction there with my gastric bypass which stops me from eating a mountain of food because prior to my gastric bypass I ate a mountain and more and more sometimes would make myself feel so ill through eating too much, I'd have to go and lie down until it digested. Sounds a bit like having a dumping syndrome, but it wasn't. It was clearly the opposite way around, where it was just, I call it a piling syndrome. I'd eat so much, I had to lay down, and then I just got bigger and bigger and bigger. But you know what I mean. Yeah, I think I wanted to talk a little bit tonight just about how I got to the point of having a gastric bypass, or why I got to the point, and I don't even know if I'm waffling again tonight, but I don't know. It's my YouTube and I'm just kind of putting it out there and trying to keep you lot engaged. And again, if you want to ask any questions, please do. Thank you everybody for following and watching and sticking with me this far. 13 minutes, I better sign off. So yeah, happy Thursday, everybody. And I'll chat to you all again really soon. Take care. Bye.